so very good morning to all who are here i will be teaching you a very special skill today how to see the invisible it's a super power that i thought i'll share with you and so if you join me in this journey let's begin now when i was young you know we used to have comics in our days and these comics would have these lovely ads at the back of them you could buy these funny and very strange gizmos one of being one of them which i used to really love was something which was the x-ray specs you know you could see through things see through walls and maybe that was my fascination for things which made me a terrible student you know i literally scraped through my school if i passed in all my subjects my parents would think i cheated so with that it was one fine morning on in 1988 when i woke up and i was a graduate with not much having been planned in my life uh, i had certain stars in my eyes because my dad had been in the uniform so i said you know i must join the uniform too and in that particular journey i cleared my cds went for the first ssp failed failed in my first attempt came back with the thought i don't know what went wrong came back tried again again i cleared my written went for my ssb service selection board to fail again and this time i had a reason it's not my fault people are against me that's why i'm not getting clear the second time when i came back is when my father sat down with me and he said what happened i said dad the entire group was a washout nobody was selected there's a bias he says i know what happened to you uh, i said dad i got rejected he says i want you to say that loudly till you remember that you have been rejected you will never accept it and move on from there and i think that was a life changing advice from there on this fear of failure was something which was sort of weighing me down so i said all right it's time to change tactics and i was speaking to some of the students here in the morning time for a plan b to refocus with that refocus what i was doing wrong was i was having just a single dedicated focus putting all my time and energies on to it not looking around and actually it was becoming that uh, my strategy was becoming hope and ladies and gentlemen hope is a terrible strategy you have in life right so with that i said no there's got to be a plan b so uh, those days computers applications had just started i'm talking 1988 and i said you know why don't i look around and try learning computers so people said you know you are terrible and uh, terrible student you are horrible in math how are you going to handle computers anyway i applied in niit and in 1988 89 i started learning cobol unix but remember when you were typing in 88 your parents were being told that your son is going to become a typist so but anyway they supported me and it carry on and i finally uh, went for this while i was doing my ssb training and also taking guidance from the serving officer as to where i had gone wrong well it was then in my third attempt in ssb that i finally got clear i think what was weighing me down was the fear of failure which having had a plan b which was future ready was not there in my third attempt and thus made it easier for me and that is how ladies and gentlemen i could finally uh, crack and make my parents proud and i joined the uh, wore the uniform now so i guess i served for 34 years in the uniform exactly 10 days ago i earned my phd in artificial intelligence so i've done pretty okay in life yeah you can be run down you can be run down you would be told many many things you're not good in x and y it's not a judgment on you it's a challenge right so that's how life goes and it's it's a full circle and uh, so now ladies and gentlemen once we did that particular time was a very very uh, you know those were simple times you all are living in very very challenging times the covid which broke the entire world we all sat down at home we uh, there was a time where a ship which was 400 meters long in suez canal broke down a complete global supply chain we have the never ending wars of russia ukraine Israel Hamas climate change water warfare is on so there is so much going on at the moment and add to that the wild card of tariffs which one is not expected right call it what you may you know you want to call it hookah you want to call it bani you want to call it rapt you want to call it tuna you are going to be operating ladies and gentlemen in a very very complex world out there right and uh, every leader 
wants to win. All of us want to win. Uh, but here's the bad news. Not everybody does. Right? There's a lovely book uh, by Jim Collins called Good by Choice, where they study 20,400 businesses to find out those businesses which outperform their industry by 10x over 10 years. 20,400 companies. How many do you think made it in the list? A mere seven, that's 0.034%. Why would that be? And that is the question. So let me go back to why this thing is very, very important. You know, we look at success stories. Our wonderful friend, Mr. Suvaka, just mentioned about these industries that the companies which have done so well. But then there are industries that have perished. Right? We believed a lot in them. We thought everything was going great. So why would that be and what would be the success mantra for life? So in my 34 years, I have been in a lot many challenging situations, whether in India or abroad. There is only one very simple thing that I have found, which is the power of seeing. But remember, you are going to be doing all this seeing with that wonderful thing in your hand, which is fighting for that finite attention which you have. You know that one pain which you have to look at while you I, while you're listening to me or any other speaker? So this is going to be a challenge and therefore, let me speak about one of the most famous innovators that I have been studying for a long time is Da Vinci, Leonardo Da Vinci. We know him for the famous Mona Lisa painting, but there are 44, 45 amazing inventions that he has created. I'm talking of 1500s, an artificial heart valve, and a helicopter, you know, war machines and the works. When Da Vinci was asked, what is that favorite tool of yours which makes you find these things? He used the Italian phrase, the motto called Saper Vedere, which means knowing how to see. He said, all my tools are just these two eyes and nothing else. I see more than the others and that has been a superpower. So, what is this knowing how to see? And ladies and gentlemen, as I go along, I shall prove that we are not seeing enough. To see what is right in front of us. To see what others don't. To see what is not there. To see before others do. To see the win, the opportunity and so many other things. That is what we are speaking of. So how many of you remember the Blackberry? I was a very, very big fan of Blackberry. Most of us would have loved the Blackberry. And I was just researching as to what happened to the uh, Blackberry. So in, as of January 22, they had stopped anything to do with the Blackberry. So what did the Blackberry CEO not see when he tried to compete with the Z10 and take away the keys from the uh, Blackberry? He made a Z10, which was trying to compete with iPhone. What did Putin not see when he invaded Ukraine? He had a 10-day plan. Ladies and gentlemen, in 10 days, Russia was to have taken over Kiev, the capital. Where are we? Three years, six months? And still that's not the end of it. What did Putin not see? Next. What did all the CEOs that you see in the background with the Nokias, the Kodaks, the case studies that you hear of, what did they not see? So the important question therefore comes is, why do people, why do you not see? It's a very, very simple thing and I'll break it down in very, very simple. There's a percept perceptual filters we're all wearing. So there are three things which are causing us not to see. One is seeing what we want. Second is seeing what we told to. Third is not seeing change. Lot of theory. Let's walk to something practical next. Now hold here. Now take 30 seconds. Anybody please tell me what do you see in this image? Do you see a satellite photo, a port, moon, ink blotch? Just, we're all seeing the same, there is no trick that I'm showing everybody else. I'll give you 30 seconds. Anybody just raise your hand and tell me what you see. This is what like you Perfect. Great. So great. So we could go on. This is a very important part of the workshops I do. Uh, can we move to the next slide? Now, ladies and gentlemen, this is a power. <laughs> this is a very, very famous 80s experiment from the experimental psychologist called Mr. Renshaw. This is the experiment of Renshaw's power. What did I do? Just go next now. Right. You remember the very first thing I told you? Seeing what we want. All of us saw this image and I love what the doctor saw. What did the doctor see? A sonography report. You know when I go down to these naval colleges, naval war colleges, I would hear things like the port, 
when I go to the army, it could be sir, the desert, the terrain, a satellite photo. Somebody who's fond of astronomy will talk about a crater on the moon. Now, I'm challenging you, now try not to see the cow. <laughs> you can't but unsee, right? So the first point was, you saw what you wanted, the second I've just proved, now you'll see exactly what I want you to see, right? Move next. So hence, what I wanted to prove was, ladies and gentlemen, you're not really seeing from your eyes, you're actually seeing from your brain. It is the experiences which have shaped up, is how we see the world. Therefore, everybody's seeing a different point of view. And that is to be celebrated, not laughed at, as you go along in the journey. So here is a very, very powerful, this is the central theme of my talk, that this talk, this quote by Henry David Thoreau, it's not what you look at which matters, it's what you see. So from looking to seeing is what I'm going to take you on this little journey. Next. So let's see what, how do I gain these superpowers of start seeing the invisible, right? I'll give you five tips. Next. First, you're going to have to lock up this piece of horrible device, which is coming in your way every 15 to 30 seconds with a ping and you're going to have to listen to it, right? The minute you do that, you are unleashing a superpower of yours, which is your creativity, your imagination which has made us who we are. How many of you go to the gym? Okay, this is a photo from one of the gyms I go to. What do you see here? Let me turn around, put it on a normal curve. Do you see what kind of weights people are using? What is the maximum? What is the minimum? What are the common kind of weights which people are using when they come here? You see, things change the minute you stop looking, you start seeing. When you go to your friend's or your relative's house, have you seen the fridge magnets that we all love putting? Have you seen the story behind it? What could it be telling you? Is it aspirational that they want to go to these places? Have they been to these places? Are they showing off? What is it? There's a story behind everything a person does and I want you to start looking beyond that obvious and start looking at what is not visible. How many of you have heard of this uh, psychological condition called pareidolia? Now pareidolia is a psychological condition, but I believe it's a superpower for leaders. Let me give you the technical definition. So it's the imagined perception of a pattern or meaning where it does not exist. Right? Let me explain. You used to do this when you were young. What do you see here? You see a bunny and there is a crocodile waiting for it right there. You used to do this when you were young. You used to be imaginative and creative. Go next. Go next. Go next. Go next. Go next. Right. This is that superpower which you possess, but you've given it to the devil which you pay a lakh for. Right? And since iPhone 17 is going to come up, there are going to be a lot of parents who are going to have to give up kidneys. Right? So, if you match the academic intelligence being given here, ladies and gentlemen, empower it and combine it with your creative intelligence, that's where innovation is born. You don't find innovation in a book, it's around you and that's what I wanted to talk about. Next. So as you go along, let yourself lose and start looking at things. That's when you start connecting the dots and you might be able to even find things what the others can't see in your business life as you join a business and a company as you start working. The art of questioning, ladies and gentlemen, with that instant phone has been lost. So questions have reduced, the answers have grown more, but the value of questions has always been supreme. What is this? Right? Uh, okay, so here's the bad news. This is not the Titanic. This is RMS Lusitania. This is the Titanic. But since Celine Dion sang that song, and Mr. DiCaprio froze to death, that story is very close to us, but ladies and gentlemen, I want you to understand, RMS Lusitania was not an accident, it was a murder where a German U-boat torpedoed that ship where 1200 people were murdered. This was an accident with an iceberg, but what do we remember? Jo dikta hai, that's what I said, you're going to see what is being told to you, but you're not going to see behind. So I'll, just one question, what happened to the Titanic? Now I'm going to leave you with a question which you can go back and ask yourself, what happened to the iceberg that sank the ship? Think about it, nobody is going to ask you this because we've got limited to that, right? So now I'll give you the second tip, the Sherlock scan. Yeah. Now start looking for things which are not there in front of you. 
right? Now, and that is what you don't see the greatest insights, like the speaker who didn't turn up, the survey question which has not been answered, the question that wasn't asked in the Q&A, right? That is where in the absence there are a lot of insights which I want you to have a look at. Please pay more attention to that. The so what chain is the most powerful and I want you to really understand this is very very simple. Anytime you say, why don't we do this? Okay, so what? Uh, so then people will do this. So what? If you run through a sequence of four to five so what's, you should come to the end a required action, a risk that you never saw or an opportunity which comes up. Because many a times we take a decision without looking at what the impact will be. Now, lastly, please view any issue or decision of yours from three different perspectives. One from your own, obviously. One from someone who completely disagrees with you and you just don't like him or her. Right? And the last being a complete outsider who has no idea what TEDx is. Come and ask him, is this okay? And you'll get this beautiful thought which you never even considered. Right? So with this, I've come to the end of my talk. I thank you so much for your attention. Next. I just want to leave you with one thought. Everybody is wanting problem solvers. But remember, ladies and gentlemen, you can't solve a problem if you don't see it. I want you to start becoming problem seers. With this, I end. Thank you so much. And it's been an absolute Thank you.